Hey, I just want to remind you guys, In Your Corner, a movie I directed on Floyd Mayweather and Sam Watson, is out now on vimo.com. In Your Corner, click the link in the description box. Uh, and I would genuinely love and appreciate you guys' support. And uh, don't, don't hesitate to leave a comment and let me know what you thought of the film. And uh, again, I appreciate you guys' support and enjoy the video. Back up like, you don't want to embarrass nobody. I'm like, son, this sport is different. You know what I mean? You're, you're a humble man, but you have to shine when it's time to shine. And he's learning that. He's starting to understand himself and realize just how good he is. And I think it's going to show in his fight. Thank you, sir. Hey, Steve, uh, you're coming to the fight a pretty significant underdog. Considering his thin resume and all that you've accomplished in the sport, do you think that he's been perhaps giving too much credit too soon? And on the other hand, you've been not giving enough credit considering all you've done? Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, uh, him coming in so highly revered is good for me, you know, because um, pending victory it made me look even better. Um, yeah, I noticed that. And but, you know, you're talking to USS Cunningham. Like I said, everywhere I've everywhere I've been the underdog. Even with a world title, even as a two-time world champion, I was the underdog. Even in Pennsylvania, my own state. I was the underdog against Thomas Adam and I got robbed. <laughs> so I'm used to this. You know what I mean? This is the kitchen I cook in. You know what I mean? So I, I see, you know, uh, he gets announced last, and you know when we did the walkout and this and that, and you know it's the hand cut, extra hand cut for him. Like, so what? Again, he and I are gonna be the only ones in that ring Saturday. That's it. They, none of this other stuff. He can't bring you know, that into the ring. He can't bring them to the ring. It's us. That's it. You have all these, you know, you've been around the sport a long time. You, he's not fought a lot of fights. He's got, what, 14 fights. So do you think he's going to learn a lot from you in the ring come Saturday night? Things that, you know, he hasn't seen from other opponents. Yeah, oh yeah. I mean, you know, he sees he's a smart kid. He's got a smart team in his corner. Um, when I fight guys, you know, shoot, I learned a lot from sparring. You know, I, I've been sparring guys. My first champion I sparred, as an, I was an amateur. I had, um, I think it was 12 amateur fights. I got a chance to spar Fernando Vargas. That was 1990. Uh, Just on our podcast last week. Buddy. Yeah, yo, and, and Fernando beat our ass. <laughs> it, was the, it was the Navy boxing team. He went from 156 up to the heavyweight and trashed us. And I learned from, from that ass whooping. Every time we sparred with him, I learned. I even actually used a couple moves that he did to us and added that to the repertoire. So, but I sparred with this guy, Larry Donald, Oliver McCall, Vladimir, you know, this guy. I, I mean, man, you go down the list, I, I sparred him and that's how you learn. So, um, that's how I learned. So maybe to beat us like that, you know, after our fight, he learns, he takes from what I did, um, you know, and, and grows from what some guys do, some don't. Not history, and I tell all my athletes, every time you step in the ring, competitive, taking one of two things, undoubtedly, there's no way to avoid it. One of these two things you take. You either take punishment or you take experience. Now you're going to take one, you try to choose which one you want. You might want one, so you try to learn from it. But if you didn't learn from it, now you got the bloody nose and your eyelids, you took punishment. And fighters are just like, fighters are just like a, a, a milk, a carton of milk, they all got inspiration. Every fight got to stop it sometime. It's over for all of them at some time. Got a number of fights in each and every fighter that's living, and nobody knows the number. So that's why you got to be careful with the career, and that's why you got to take care of yourself the way he does. Tremendous talent, man. Underappreciated. You know what I mean? Underappreciated. He doesn't get the big fan faders. But I think he's on the start now where more people going to know about him after this time. And Tabit is a talent. Just hasn't been tested. You know what I mean? But he's, he looks like the kid with all the good strength, power, speed. He looks like all those things. Great corner, great. I mean, it's just, this is a test for him. Speaking of being underappreciated, uh, do you think you and your run with Bernard Hopkins will be underappreciated in terms of historical perspective? Boxers and trainers, there's almost two different worlds in, combined. You know, Bernard is going to be acknowledged. There's a title that he had I thought was going to stand forever. Him having the most title defense is the middleweight. Because the way kids jump weight now, and everybody's making weight, you can't hold the weight to them. So I never thought it would last long. But here's Triple G right on top of it. That's why we box the matches, man. You know what I mean? That's why I say this is a, 
this, this guy know the history. Philadelphia is famous for bringing old guys to, well, to the fight for the young boys to pick one. But they're also famous for, for turning that back, too. And that's what we plan on doing side. Uh, uh, let me ask you, since since I uh, have an admiration of your historical perspective and your social consciousness, uh, what's your take on Colin Kaepernick? Who's Colin Kaepernick? If you can chime in on it too, if you feel like it, what's your take on Colin Kaepernick? I can't say I don't think it's Colin Kaepernick. The football player. I'm seeing the same. I'm about to say anything. I just football you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> What do you mean my take on him? They say that um, he uh, can't get a job because he's blackballed because he took the knee for the national anthem. Yeah. Oh, he can't get a job. The kid can play ball. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Listen, man. It's a feature. The media is a great tool for, 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 for entertaining and, and, and getting that information out there. This social media is getting to the point we so deep in the guys' lives. You talking about, you know, hey, I'm not going to, I don't, we ain't going to put this guy in the Hall of Fame because all he was was Haynes instead of the Fruit of the Looms. Yo, what do they have to do whether or not this guy's a talent? We got to stay with what they do. We only here for what they do. I can't be concerned about where they live and, 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 and who they pray to. That's not our business, man. Can the guy still run the ball? Can the guy still dunk the ball? Can the ball still throw the football? So, that's all that matters. And he took his knee and for his beliefs, man, that, that, when I was a young boy, my grandfather called that character. Mm -hmm. People are telling you they disagree with you, but you believe this is and you're not hurting nobody. He called that character when I was a kid. I mean, I don't know what he believed in. I don't know. I, I saw the thing with the taking the knee thing and the national anthem and thing. That's what the man believes. You know I mean, can he still play ball? I'm only hiring him to, to, to play this game. Hey, man, what, is, that a bad, is that a bad role model for the kids? Come on, man. Kids, their, their parents is their role model, man. They can play ball. So I, I hope he finds a job. I want to see every man work. I mean, I, I've been unemployed before. I've been hungry before. I don't want to see. I don't wish that on nobody. You know what I mean? So, so I hope the man finds a job. Let the man do his job. You want to chime in on that? Yeah, cool. Yeah, um, I mean, I first it's like um, with Colin, he, he's been kneeling. You know, he's been kneeling before the media put the cameras on him. You know, and then for some reason they decide to focus on him. Now we make a story. He's been doing it for about a year, I, I believe. I heard. So now it's oh, this is an issue now, and it's like. Like he was saying about the media, whatever the media wants to put out there in your face and make you get emotional about, they can do it. The television is very powerful. It's one of the most powerful things in the world, you know, because from the TV, we, we learn what's good, what's bad, what not to do. You know, a lot of us learn sex, <laughs> how to deal with women, money, all this stuff. So um, they know that. So they put this stuff out there. We have this whole big race issue now. Um, they're acting like this stuff is new. This race issue wasn't new. It's not new to us, to some of us, you know, the, the blacks in America or the Latinos um, or, or even the Asians, you know. It's not new, but it's it's the hot topic now. Trump, you know, this and that, and say this, not neo-Nazis. I, I, I scrolled down my own timeline last week, and I made the post, I'm like, damn, all I'm seeing is neo-Nazi Confederate flags, and like, what the hell's really going on? You know what I mean? What are they keeping us, um, <coughs> away from you know what are they really doing because this is not new news but with Colin Kaepernick I I, I applaud what he's doing you know I, I totally applaud what he's doing um me personally would I would I do it like that no not like that that's his protest I'll do my own you know what I'm saying um but I'll kneel to in support um secondly what he did with his protest is brought to my attention and many other um African American, if you want to call us that, you know, or Black American, yeah. <laughs> you know, I don't like to go by that or Black, uh -huh. but I'm an American. But you know, if the Black Americans, if you pay attention to the second stanza in the national anthem, I mean, it was written by a slave master, and it's basically talking about killing the slaves who are trying to get away. And I mean, I think that's that that should be changed. I think the anthem should be changed. You know, me personally, um, they shouldn't say. It. But they're going to this is America. We know that we have to fight for anything that we want to get done to, to help us with pieces and we've done it, we fought, we still got a long way to go. But um 
This is America, man. The foundation of America is slavery, race, racial issues, um, death, theft. I mean, that's what it is. So in order to change the foundation, we got to really, we all got to dig down and, and get the business. It can't just be black people mad. It's got to be blacks, even whites, and, and Latinos. We're all mad at this, this issue because we all have that one common enemy, and that's the, that's the elite, the system. The system is digging us all out, period. What's been the uh, key to longevity? Obviously, I see you're probably well under 7% body fat. And <laughs> look, at that, look at your arms, but what's been your key to success in the longevity? Your ups and downs and your misfortunes, mm. you know, especially on the scorecard. Yeah, yeah, times, no but, doubt. Yeah, well, it's well, been, there's been a few things. I mean, really, the, the, the first key has been, this is what I do. This is my job, so treat it like a job. You know, um, Steve Cunningham, I mean, literally, after, after fights, I'm in the gym 10 days or a week. Two, less than two weeks after, I'm back at it, I'm back on the road, I'm back doing something. I'm, I'm, I'm sparring with guys, you know, younger guys, you know, new guys. I go to camp with Vladimir, he'll call me, hey, I need you in camp. I went to camp with Fury after our fight. You know, I like to, I like, you know what I mean? Listen, you, you want to pay me to do what I'm going to be doing anyway, I'm, I'm out. And I get to travel, I get to go to Austria, I get to go to Belgium, I'm out. You know, so, and, and learn. Um, secondly is, still hungry. You see two-time world champion, but you, you you know, Steve Cunningham's not um, rolling in the dough. You know, I, I haven't had a big payday, like like six, seven hundred thousand dollar payday. You know, I'm true. But the way we've been living, I can take a seven hundred thousand dollar payday and retire and, and build off of that seven hundred thousand. I know exactly what to do. We, 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 we invested in some real estate, this and that. So, man, I can get at least seven different homes in the hood and make money off of that with seven hundred thousand dollars. Clean them up night. So I guess that's why I haven't gotten a pity that big because I'd have been gone. <laughs> yeah. Who do you think's gonna win the World Series of Boxing Tournament? Um, who do I think? I don't. You know what, man? You throw it up in the air, man. Because I mean, you got Garcia, Usyk. Um, I mean, Ladarchik. You can't sleep on Ladarchik. You know, Huck. Huck, I think Huck is good, but I, I think I think he's fighting Usyk, and I think Usyk's gonna. You know, get him, you know, but I mean, you got some, it's a throw up, man. I tell you this, I'm gonna be watching, you know, I'm gonna be watching. Wish I could have been in it. Yeah, see, I wanna say one thing about this, man. I mean, turn him back to when he see he comes right back in the gym after he works out. And I told him and his wife what that meant to me. I have a kid in the gym who I love to death, and he can't fight a tag. I told him I walk in the gym able to fight better than he fight, man. He's been in the gym about a year. But he works hard and he tries. Steve came back in right after he fought, the next week after he fought. And I was in there in the gym with the kid. And I wanted somebody to hold the medicine ball. I looked over, Steve was taking off his stuff. I said, what you doing? I thought you want somebody to hold the ball for me. He was going to hold the ball. This wasn't an Olympian who was coming back with a silver medal. This wasn't a kid who was an outstanding amateur or when an up and coming pro that the world's watching. This is the kid that, like I said, can't, I trained the kid. I said one day he might just come back and sponsor the gym or something. He might be one of them guys that never box, but he always loved it. But he was going to get me. Now, most guys, I know other guys in the gym that have been like, I ain't holding the ball for him. They thought they were too big or too big. This guy, two time world champion, who just fought, he could have just fought and said his hand was a little sore, but he was going to hold the medal. I said, nah, man, put that down, man. So you say you need somebody to hold the ball for him. But that's how he is, and that's how he treats kids in the gym. And that's why they love him. You know what I mean? That's the person. Steve Cunningham is a tremendous human being who just happens to know how to box. <laughs> that's what he is. And I used, to, I used to say that a lot about Shane Mosley. Same way. They were good people. They were parents raised the right kind of kids. They just have skills in the arena of boxing. You know I mean? But that's more important. This guy's a great man. Just it happens to be a pretty good boxer too. Steve, what does it mean to be on this card? I can't explain it, you know. This is there's no there's really no words to you know to, to really grasp the um, severity of this show. I mean this is my first time on something so big, you know, so mega. Um, 
I mean, I, I was I was here I was behind the scenes with uh, Shane Mosley versus Pacquiao, and I got a chance to see a mega fight. But you know, this being even bigger than that, and I'm part of it now. It's like, oh, it was like, man, I didn't really allow myself to think about it too much because you can, you know, that can add compounded nervousness to you. Oh, I got I got to perform this as big as you know. So I, I was like, I'm gonna wait till I get there, and then you know, really deal with how big it is, man. But I mean, it's. It's beautiful. It, it, it really, we were just saying this in the fighting meeting again. Uh, Steve Farhood, I mean, Al, Al Bernstein was like, hey man, this is your, you finally get to fight on Showtime. And I'm like, you know, these past few years, I've been really doing things that I've really done basically almost all and that I could do on boxing. And, I'm, and I mean it by like, I finally got a chance to fight on HBO, you know, just once it didn't matter, I just still did. Um, now it's Showtime. You know, I got a chance to campaign in Europe. You know, I wanted to do that. Um, and now it's Showtime and I'm on a pay-per-view card. So, I'm, I'm happy, man. I'm excited, I'm ecstatic. And that's why I'm gonna get in the ring and have some fun, you know? What was it like when you when you were told you are gonna kick off the pay-per-view? Me and my wife were like, what? <laughs> we don't, what? You know, I mean, that, and then that makes you go, ah, yeah, you know, you take that to the gym, you know, and you, get, you keep, you, you fight down. Oh, man, you keep going, you know, push hard. So I got I got so many added motivations, you know what I mean? So when the age comes up and you've done this, you've done that, I'm still motivated, you know, I still got a lot that motivates me and moves me, man. So this is one of them. Does the main event in your way hurt boxing because this he's going Floyd's going up against an MMA fighter or do you disagree with with the sentiment from the public? Say I'm sorry, the beginning part again. Do you think this the a lot of people are saying, oh, you know, you got a undefeated legend facing a guy who's never even had a professional fight. Nah, I don't think, because I was posing this question uh, on, on Facebook, and I'm very, those of you who know me, I'm, I'm pretty vocal on Facebook. And um, I, I let them know, like, listen, I said, this, this fight cannot hurt boxing, and I'm, I'm going to tell you why. Because it's opening doors for other fighters to fight. You know, the whole, you know, we had a fight the other day, Tuesday. That's fighters making money. That's fighters getting an opportunity to move up. You know, that's fighters getting an opportunity to show the world what they can do. And on this card. So, just because Floyd is fighting Mayweather, you know, I'm about to make some money and, and hopefully get a win. You know, I mean, I, I catch it here and there. I watched the Holly Holmes, um, uh, Ronda Rousey, yeah, Ronda. Ronda Rousey fight, no doubt. We bought that. But, um, you know, I, anybody, you know, if, if the fight, if the fight's to be made, let's make it, you know, I do it. I mean, it's, it's good for, it's good for both sports, you know? You know, back to what you had said earlier about what if he did, what if Floyd did lose? Would that hurt his legacy at all if he, if he loses or is it just, you know, yeah, it happened. The legacy, man. <laughs> Gotta put a big boot hole in the legacy, you know? Um, the legacy is TVE, you know? Best ever. This dude beats him, oh no. Floyd, man, listen, I think Floyd would get laughed out of, off the planet, you know, but of course there will be a rematch. But I mean, listen, Floyd's not that guy to take anybody light. His style nullifies style. Even though McGregor's gonna be awkward in the beginning, because I've sparred MMA guys before, and you know, they throw different combos. Like we're used to one, two, three, block, block, slip. They're throwing hook, two, uppercut, and you boop, boop, oh. But after a while, after a round or two, you know, we got it. You know, you got the rhythm. That's what, that's how Floyd beats everybody. You see, you, you notice after about three or four rounds, He's got these and top upper echelon fighters. He's got them down to a science. He's already got that rhythm. Game over. So same thing for McGregor. It might happen even sooner. You know. <laughs> See, if you put the issue of Floyd legacy being tarnished, that's because. Troy's been revered for so many years, and so many years. I used to say that's why they dogged Adrian Broner so bad when he lost. Because they couldn't get Floyd. So we got the closest thing to it, we're going to drag him through the middle. So Floyd talked and did all the brass talking. Like he even said, ironically, they used to have a problem with it. They don't seem to have a problem with McGregor doing it. It's okay that McGregor is showing his behind and cutting up and doing it. Nobody really saying nothing. It's entertainment. Everybody in the wild is funny. But I mean, when Floyd was doing these things a couple of years ago, it was bad mouth for Floyd. He's arrogant. He's, he's, so they're still waiting to see him get his behind. And what the shit that taught us his career called Ali the Greatest. He lost to a man with eight fights. I don't think he's going to lose the fight. 
But what I'm saying is, a man has already knocked down 49 joints. You, you, you shoot 49 baskets. I ain't got a problem with you, Mr. One. I, I, do, I don't got a problem. But they're critiquing him because of the history of Floyd. But Floyd's a tremendous talent, man. You got to, like I said, Steve Cunningham, when you say world champion, and I had an argument with another world champion about this. I had somebody question whether he was a world champion. He wasn't a world champion like the other world champion. I said, man, this guy be Russian and Russian. This guy be Poland and Poland. Germans and Germany. That's world champion. He took this tour. He took this boxing tour around the world. For everybody, like he said, he was underdog everywhere. Eating different foods, time zones, all that. And still performing. This might be one of the realest world champions. And y'all can check the record faster than me. I can't even count how many undefeated fighters he's faced. This ain't even a new walker. He might have fought as many under. I know he fought more than half. The kid he's fighting tonight, the kid he's fighting this weekend, doesn't have half of his bouts. For Steve would have been undefeated. He got like 14, 15 fights. I know Steve fought more than 7, 8 undefeated. That's, that's unheard of in this area. Man. He's an ambassador for our sport. Our standing family, I said, you can't find a woman out there saying that, 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 that she smoked weed with him, you can't find him. He said, our standing dude, man. These are the dudes that we need to be putting on the camera and telling our kids, hey, here's an app, here's a cat that you can look at too, and really admire and inspire him. But a lot of times they're in the shadows. But he gets the time to hit the light and he'll make his voice heard in the middle of that ring. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you.